Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. I am Nick Chase from Morantis, and we are here to talk about Morantis OpenStack 7.0, the industry's most VMware-friendly distribution. And in this case, we are going to be talking about how Morantis OpenStack and VMware fit together in the context of networking and bimodal IT. Today's uh, today's speakers are going to be uh, Eric G, who is uh, responsible for go, for joint go-to-market activities and sales enablement with technology partners. In other words, uh, he works with other companies who uh, help us implement our partner uh, strategy in terms of making sure that Morantis OpenStack works with other, uh, other products from other companies. He has uh, come to us from Juniper Networks, so he is a networking guy. Uh, we also have the illustrious John Janeshig, who is in our uh, who is our technical solutions marketing expert and uh, he does a whole range of things and he is an all-around genius uh, for which he will probably smack me later but uh, he is a uh, former almost software certainly. developer almost certainly <laughs> as definitely certainly um, Anyway, he is a former software developer, 3D event platform creator. He does all kinds of things, and he is going to be uh, helping us discuss both uh, fuel and networking. And I am the editor-in-chief of OpenStack Now, uh, which is now OpenStack Unlocked. And I will just be sort of moderating the conversation between these two guys. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. Before we move on, let's do a, just a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, as you can see on your screen, you have a window in which you can ask questions. So if you have any questions on anything that uh, occurs to you during the presentation, please go ahead and put it in there. If we see something that's kind of germane to what we're talking about at that second, uh, we will try and answer it sort of in the flow. But most of the time what we do is we keep the questions until the end. And, um, and then we answer them in the Q&A at the end of the session. Um, Please don't ask us, will there be a recording and can we get the slides? Because I will tell you right now, the answer is yes. And if you ask us, the answer will still be yes. We will give you a link to the slides at the end. And uh, in a day or two, we will give you a link to the uh, video. In fact, if you have attended uh, any of the rest of the presentations in this series, you already have a link to the page where the video will be. So, um, on that note, I am going to go ahead and turn the conversation over to John Janechik. So, John, tell us what we're going to hear about today. Thanks, everybody. Well, the the the, the overarching theme uh, is uh, bimodal IT, by which uh, we mean, and uh, Gartner and other people mean, um, uh, a, a form of IT that comprehends multiple families of clouds, one uh, of which is, uh, is focused on, um, uh, on, uh, on stable, uh, mission critical, and, and, uh, and demanding uh, workload support and processes around those things, and uh, another uh, exemplified by OpenStack that, uh, that supports uh, a rapid change and uh, scale out uh, and uh, could, you know, severely control total cost of ownership and, uh, and other things that people are looking uh, you know, forward to uh, uh, getting from a, from a substantially open sourced uh, uh, go forward uh, vision for, uh, for cloud computing. Um, the, the specific local topics we're going to be discussing, however, are the imminent releases of two fuel plugins which facilitate deployment of, of uh, uh, VMware uh, integrated technologies uh, with uh, Mirandus OpenStack. One is um, uh, in support of uh, vSphere Distributed Switch, which uh, uh, we call DVS because that's the historic uh, acronym. Um, and the other uh, is, uh, is uh, a plugin that connects uh, uh, OpenStack controllers uh, to uh, a, a vSphere cluster equipped with NSXV software-defined networking, a much more fluent um, and, uh, and feature-rich uh, networking implementation uh, based, as you mostly probably know, on uh, the Nusira technology. Um, 
we're going to give you, by the end of this uh, uh, circus, we're going to have uh, shown you two demonstrations, one of uh, DVS and one of NSXV um, installation and operation, and you should be in uh, pretty good shape uh, at that point to uh, take these plugins upon their release and put them to work, uh, uh, you know, and start experimenting with uh, integrated um, Ranch Sub and Stack and VMware um, um, uh, cloud computing. Uh, so, with that, I'm going to turn the baton over to my colleague Eric, uh, who will lead you through the, uh, the core uh, technologies and uh, releases and uh, details. Thank you, John. Uh, so, to start with, I will spend a few minutes giving you a quick snapshot of uh, Marantis. So if you attended some previous sessions, you probably heard uh, we talked about three pillars of uh, value proposition. So those three pillars are guiding principles or kind of our approach to deliver the OpenStack Cloud. So starting with the first pillar, singular focus. So everything we do at Marantis is around OpenStack. So essentially we take the OpenStack source code, make it more robust, easy to use, and faster deploy. So when you and your customer take the Marantis OpenStack, you know it's tested it can scale and it's production ready, so it's, it gives you a peace of mind, right? The second pillar is really about our open approach. So we are 100% open. So that means we take everything we are developing and contribute that back to OpenStack community. Um, so uh, we have been top three contributors to OpenStack source code uh, for the recent June release, we are actually number one in bug fixes. Uh, not only that, but also we are uh, leading some of the key projects, including FIO. Uh, FIO is an OpenStack deployment and management tool. Um, we will spend uh, uh, more time talking about it in a moment. So also, uh, Morano is an application uh, catalog project, and etc. Cetera, et cetera. So we are leading many of the uh, key developments for OpenStack. The third pillar, or final pillar, is about pure play. So we are vendor agnostic. So this is very important to you because we can collaborate with our technology partners, including VMware, to bring to your customers the best of breed solutions at a very single layer of the stack. Compute, storage, networking, or any application running on top of the OpenStack, what have you. Right? So in summary, so those three pillars really differentiate Marantis from the rest of the players in the market. So this is also a reason that many, many customers are coming to us to deploy the OpenStack cloud. So that's kind of a quick summary of, uh, of Marantis, what do we do here. So the John uh, mentioned by model IT. So basically, according to Gartner, so many of today's enterprise uh, operate at large, VMware-based uh, virtualized infrastructure to run a, their business, to run their uh, mission-critical applications. So typically, so they are running uh, with a small number of large servers. So those applications um, uh, is is uh, that requires a high level of uh, reliability and resiliency right, of the underlying infrastructure. So VMware is providing a robust and proven platform. So with its uh, uh, virtualizing, virtualization technology around compute, networking, storage, and management. But at the same time, so these IT teams also under pressure to move faster uh, innovate faster and be more agile. So they are facing some new use cases, right? Different set of applications that demand agility or scale out model. So we see many, many organizations and developers are turning to OpenStack for the solution. So the, the reason is obvious, as we know that OpenStack provides the tools to abstract the underlying infrastructure uh, to enable the flexible architecture 
and also provides the open APIs and the tools, the, the, the public cloud experience to the developers, allow them to innovate faster. So the on the left side, you have traditional IT. On the right-hand side, you have agile IT. So this is uh, what uh, John mentioned, the, the, the notion of bimodal IT introduced by uh, Gartner. So Eric, let me just kind of interrupt you for a second. So I, I just want to yeah. make sure that we're, we're making a clear distinction. So cloud-native applications are fundamentally different from the sort of traditional monolithic applications. You know, they're structured differently. Uh, you know, they're, they're made for an environment uh, where they, as they assume that things, uh, you know, can, can fail and so on and so forth. It's just a fundamentally different architecture, but neither is better than the other. They're just different. Is that correct? Yeah, so the, 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 the notion of bimodal IT is it, these two models will coexist in the, in the future IT organization. Uh, right. You can have type 1 for traditional IT focused on the stability and resiliency. Then you have type 2 uh, focused on the uh, speed to market and uh, agility. Right? So right. those two uh, flavors will, will coexist. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, so the question here is, can we, uh, can you, uh, enterprise, get the best of both, uh, both worlds, right? So the uh, agility uh, from OpenStack and the uh, uh, stability from the uh, VMware infrastructure. So that's exactly what we're going to, uh, we're hoping to solve with this joint solution. So this joint VMware and Marantis solution is about to combine the benefits of both worlds, right? So the stability uh, from the uh, VMware infrastructure and agility from the Emeritus OpenStack. Okay, excellent. So, the, which brings us right here. So go ahead and Eric, explain to us now how this integration works. Yeah, we have a long journey of uh, partnership with VMware. We have, we, together we developed uh, deep technology integration uh, spanning across multiple OpenStack projects. So what we've done here is mainly around the uh, integration and the validation of all different uh, uh, OpenStack drivers. So on the right, you can see that uh, so we have integration uh, around uh, Nova, uh, our driver, right, for, for vSphere. And also we, do, we mix the vSphere environment with uh, uh, KVN environment in one cloud. Uh, managed by one single OpenStack cloud management system. So we have uh, uh, different back-end uh, center drivers, uh, VMDK, and also uh, SAF, LVM for iSCSI uh, uh, center driver, and also uh, Glance uh, uh, support for vSphere data store back-end. So, so that's, that's, we, that's the integration we have done together over the past few releases, right? Right. So what is new for this release, 7.0 release, is we are bringing the uh, neutral networking into this solution. So okay. we, we are, that's what we are going to focus a lot on today's uh, uh, session. So we're introducing uh, two modes of the uh, uh, neutron plugins. The first one is vSphere distributed switch, uh, VDS mode. The second one is uh, NSX V mode or advanced mode. Okay, so tell us about those two modes then. Yeah, so you know, okay, so we start with the first one, the VDS mode. So VDS is vSphere distributed switch um, provided by VMware. So what it does is to centralize, provide a centralized uh, uh, interface to manage virtual networking across multiple hosts. So the data plane is still local to the VDS uh, switch but the management plane is centralized. So that's the key benefit of this uh, solution. So it's VLAN based, meaning that uh, it's simple management, simple operation of the virtual network. Um, it also comes with some uh, networking features, right? It is also worth noting that the, this VDS uh, 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 drive switch is also the, uh, the foundation technology for the NSX um, 
uh, network virtualization. So we will talk. We will take a look at that uh, a moment later. So what okay. we did uh, for this integration is about the uh, neutron ML2 uh, driver integration. So the neutron driver will um, integrate, will interact with the DBS switch on the V center and translate that neutron API and implement the uh, the networking uh, requests. So the second aspect about integration is the few VDS plugin integration. The few integration will um, will automate that installation and the configuration of the uh, VDS switch uh, environment. Then we're going to look at uh, few plugins in a in a about two or three minutes, right? Yes, yes. John will talk about the uh, more about the few plugin. Okay. So what is so great about the VDS plugin? So this this mainly uh, a couple of reasons. Uh, uh, so people will go with the VDS plugin. The first one is the VDS driver is for free, right? This comes with. Uh, <laughs> That's always uh, good. Free is yeah, is good. <laughs> if you already have the VMware Enterprise Plus license, then it, it, it go with it, right? Okay. I think the second, the second reason, uh, that's my favorite one, is that you, you want to build, uh, use the OpenStack to manage the heterogeneous environment. So the VDS driver will support that. You can, you can mix match ML2 VDS driver with multiple network solutions. Um, any virtual or physical network ML2 driver, you can use them together with VDS driver. And also, you can support multiple hypervisors. You can mix um, vCenter or VDS environment with KVM OVS environment. Excellent. So you so it's really so it's really gives you the most amount of sort of freedom and diversity. Yes. Yes. And also uh, with the integration with OpenStack, uh, Miranda's OpenStack, it, it tremendously. Uh, Simplify uh, the operation benefits, right? It provides you the benefits because the, the customers will pl uh, deploy the production ready Marantas open step in conjunction with the VMware. Right? Excellent. And also There's got to be a the, downside. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, the downside uh, is about it's, uh, it's, a, it's a layer two VLAN uh, solution. So you can that's the you can only use the VLAN for tenant separation. Uh, if okay. you're looking for uh, for layer three or advanced networking services, you probably go with the next solution, which we are going to talk about. Okay. So that would be mode two. Okay. So tell us about that. Yeah, the mode two is the NSX for uh, vSphere plugin uh, integration. So the NSX basically is the VMware's SDN solution to offer the networking services in software. Right? So with that networking uh, virtualization technology, you basically you can manage the uh, virtual network pretty much the same way you use uh, server virtualization technology to manage VMs, right? Right. So with this v NS NSX, you can get complete set of um, layer two to layer seven network or security services, uh, logical switching, routing, firewall, load balancing, VPN, uh, what have you, right? So that's where you get the advantage over using just the plain VDS. Yes, yes. So, so, so as a result, those those services you can instantiate uh, just through the API calls, right? Okay. So yeah, similar integration. Um, for this mode, we have uh, integration with uh, the NSX uh, uh, driver. Um, uh, so you, you can take, if you take spend a few minutes to take a look at the diagram on the right, it shows the NSX architecture. Um, basically, it has the centralized uh, um, control plane in the control uh, NSF controller. Um, so then you have centralized uh, management plane for NSX manager. So all integration around the NSX driver, so we have the NSX driver to take the Neutron API and talk to the NSX manager 
and, and then the NSX manager will take that uh, our request and create a virtual network and do all the network uh, uh, services orchestration from there. Again, the second aspect of the integration is, uh, is a field plug-in integration. So with field plug-in integration, we pretty much automate the, all the manual processes is required to install and configure the NSXV uh, drivers. Right now, let, let me just uh, let me just clarify one thing. Now, this is a Neutron driver, as opposed to we were talking about with the VDS. That was an ML2 mechanism driver. So, what is the difference between those two things? Yes. Yeah, so, yes, that means that uh, this one, uh, the ML2 driver is modular approach, the modular layer two driver. So, you can have multiple. Uh, back end, uh, um, multiple back end mechanism driver, right? So that means multiple networking solutions running at the same time. But this right. is monolithic, so you can only run uh, uh, one networking solution at a time. Gotcha. Yeah. So this would be only vCenter. Yeah, yeah. But this huge benefit of this solution, so basically, it as I mentioned, it provides full set of layer two to layer seven network services, right? Right. So there's a lot of uh, attributes or benefits uh, uh, VMware is promoting for this NSX solution. Uh, if you're looking for agility or VM mobility, uh, security such as a virtual uh, distributed firewall, uh, multi-tenancy with layer through, uh, I mean, multi-tenancy with large scale. So, so those, if you're looking for those attributes, you definitely want to go with NSX solution. Right. So, I mean, if you're, yeah. So, if you're a vCenter only environment anyway, that's using the agility of OpenStack, this is a good solution for you. Yes. This basically, this uh, the, the use case for this is I already have the vCenter environment. I have a lot of investment already there, right? So, I want to bring the agility to my current environment. So, that's the right use case for me. Okay. So let's let's move on. Um, right. and so at now this point, I, guess, I was going to say. So I'm going to. So from here, we're going to turn this over to John, who's going to talk about fuel. Okay. Um, just very quickly, since many of you are probably already familiar with fuel, fuel is a, an OpenStack um, um, uh, project uh, that uh, that was started uh, in an attempt, uh, successful. Uh, I'm happy to report. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to create a uh, to to create an open source pluggable um, deployer for uh, OpenStack that would take not only community OpenStack but also um, uh, the 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 core of community OpenStack but also special projects and um, and um, and uh, options and experimental features and uh, validated uh, uh, plugins uh, into account. So would facilitate not just the deployment of OpenStack uh, components itself, i.e. a cluster, but uh, also be able to deploy um, third-party products, SDNs, um, complex uh, underlying uh, resilient storage frameworks like Ceph, um, and uh, and uh, a host of configuration impose a host of configurational options. The way the way Fuel works is in terms of uh, a set of reference architectures that reflect, at this point, substantially Mirantis's, but uh, as we go forward, increasingly the community's um, a cumulative best practice uh, about how to make um, uh, OpenStack environments that are robust, resilient, um, and scale exceptionally well. Um, the, the field experience is, uh, is, is critical uh, here uh, because it's reflected in um, in, um, uh, in 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 solid deployment options for uh, for example uh, controller high availability and uh, multiple hypervisor uh, deployments uh, and um, and uh, uh, deployment of the specialized uh, component service required by some SDN solutions for example. Um, in uh, in uh, in uh, forms that are truly production ready, um, so it's a way of getting uh, from a pile of hardware to a deployed uh, OpenStack with fully integrated and functional third-party adjuncts. 
um, with minimal hair pulling uh, and in minimal time, uh, because whatever you do with uh, with fuel is uh, uh, is uh, repeatable. Um, the fuel experience, uh, as you'll see uh, in uh, in our demos, is um, is highly adjustable by the plugins that you choose to option into a particular uh, fuel master node. Um, and uh, uh, you know this illustration, which is probably not clear enough to see in great detail, is an example of the configuration a tab uh, in fuel that's created when you install the NSXV plugin. Um, all of the uh, all of the uh, the uh, the MoRef IDs and other VMware specific uh, terminology and uh, and variables required to complete configuration and integration are are there, and these become as a result relatively easy to seek out in vSphere client and uh, and in the uh, the MoRef browser. Uh, versus digging server. through versus digging through a ton of files to figure documentation out. and just trying to figure out trying to align terminology and doing a lot of other very painful head scratching. Right. So, uh, without further ado, but probably with some bobbles. Um, <laughs> oh, and sorry. One more thing is one of the nice things about fuel plugins is that we organize all the fuel plugins in a lovely catalog page, so you can find them easily along with their documentation. <laughs> so, <laughs> in a couple of days, you would think, you know, but I mean, sometimes this stuff is hard to find. It's not hard to find here. Uh, in a couple of days, when these uh, these uh, these poor plugins have. Uh, um, uh, have completed their uh, validation and checkout process, which is extensive and iterative. They will be posted to the Fuel Plugins catalog and be available for immediate review. And we will, so, in fact, link to that from the thank you page for this webinar as soon as they are available. So, Correct. So uh, without further ado now, uh, I will attempt to make this complex switch to, uh, to the other presentation mode and show you these two products in operation. The first step in installing OpenStack with support for VMware DVS is to download the Fuel Plugin RPM package, copy it to the Fuel Master if it's not downloaded there directly, and install it with the Fuel Plugins command. Here the operator types Fuel Plugins to list plugins currently installed, there are none, then installs the plugin itself. The process takes several seconds to complete and reports on progress throughout. Now we're using Fuel's web UI to create a new OpenStack environment. Selecting both QEMU and vCenter as hypervisors and choosing Neutron with VLAN segmentation as the networking model. Fuel can see five free nodes, three of which are assigned to the controller role. These will be installed in HA configuration. The remaining two nodes are defined as computes. One will be an OpenStack KVM standard compute storage node. The other will be given the compute VMware role, which signifies its use as a proxy between Nova Scheduler and a VMware compute cluster. Selecting all nodes at once, we spread network roles across all available NICs. then we verify the default network configuration. In settings, installing the DVS plugin has caused a tab to appear enabling further configuration. We provide the DV switch's name and ensure that the plugin is enabled. Under the VMware tab, we provide IP address and credentials enabling connection to the vCenter server.
and we configure the integration to access two of these RIC clusters as OpenStack compute nodes. checking details one final time, we can deploy. We can watch detailed progress as Fuel deploys our desired configuration of OpenStack. Normally, this is pretty uneventful. When deployment completes, we can run Fuel's health checks to function and sanity check our new OpenStack. Tests that are relevant to the current configuration, thus aren't performed, are highlighted in red. Everything else looks okay. Now let's test our environment. From within Horizon, our vSphere compute hosts appear as the vCenter availability zone, and our KVM host appears as the Nova availability zone. Let's launch instances in each using a VMware VMDK version of the standard Cirrus test image to launch in vCenter. and the regular QCAP2 version to launch in Nova. As they spin up, let's look at vSphere Client. On vSphere Client, we can examine the distributed port group for our DVS instance and drill down to see the VM we launched into it. Back in Horizon, the instances appear on successive IP addresses of the single internal virtual network that Fuel creates by default when it deploys a new cluster. In fact, this virtual network spans the DVS domain on the VMware side and the Open vSwitch domain on the OpenStack KVM side. Do we have connectivity between instances and the separate AZs? Let's open a console on the KVM instance and see if we can ping the vSphere instance. Yes, we can. Opening up vSphere Client, we find the VM, open its VLC console, and can ping in the opposite direction as well. OpenStack's network topology display shows our shared virtual network with both servers on it. Can we build new networks? Let's build one using Horizon. We'll specify network name, subnet name, address range, and gateway IP. We'll then add an interface with the shared router so the new network and the original internal network can see one another. We launch a third instance, again on vCenter. We can see the new network in the network list, 
and we can see it in orange on Horizon's network topology graphic display. Over in vSphere, we can now see all the VMs in our port group. And through vSphere, we can ping the first instance by IP, the second instance, and Google's name server as well, showing public network connectivity. The first step in installing OpenStack with support for VMware NSXV is to download the Fuel Plugin RPM package, copy it to the Fuel Master, and install it with the Fuel Plugins command. Here, the operator types Fuel Plugins to list plugins currently installed. There are none. That installs the plugin itself. It takes a little while because the plugin needs to restart when a fuel stocker containers. Now we'll use Fuel's web UI to create a new OpenStack environment. As you can see, Fuel shows the NSXV plugin has been installed. We begin creating a new environment by clicking on the cloud icon to start the new environment wizard. Selecting vCenter as a hypervisor, standard for a VMware integration, causes the Fuel NSXV plugin to unlock a Neutron with Tunneling Segmentation network model option. We define a single controller for this integration. If we wanted HA, we would give three nodes this role. No KVM compute nodes will be selected. While we could add them, they couldn't accept VXLAN traffic from NSX edge nodes. We use the default network interface configuration. In this integration, where all tenant traffic will be isolated inside the vSphere infrastructure, it doesn't matter where we put the public network. Here we configure the integration with vCenter, providing credentials and other information. We'll need a lot of information from vSphere to complete this operation, so we'll open up vSphere Client. In our setup, OpenStack's Nova Compute Service, running on the controller, will be connecting to vCenter via the public network. In configuring this part of the integration, the compute part, we tell Fuel about one of the two clusters in our vCenter, Cluster 1, which will be used to host OpenStack VMs. The other, Cluster 2, will be used to store NSX Edge VMs, on which NSX provisions network services. Here, we configure the NSXV plugin. Much of this configuration is done by obtaining Managed Object Reference, or MoRef IDs, for vCenter and NSX components from the MoRef browser on vCenter and inputting them here. MoRef IDs are used to identify cluster names, data stores, and other entities. We find the MoRef browser by adding slash MOB to the vCenter URI. Important entities for plugin configuration include the NSX Manager hostname, username and password, the data center MoRef ID, identifying the data center where NSX edges will be provisioned,
The cluster more FIDs for OpenStack VMs. These are the same as we inserted on the VMware tab. The resource pool more rough ID. This is the resource pool where NSX Edge nodes will be created. In our setup, we're using an implicit resource pool comprising all resources of cluster 2. The data store more rough ID. This is the data store for NSX Edge disks. The external port group, this is the port group ID which connects edge VMs to the transport, i.e. physical network. And the transport zone, more RFID. A transport zone is a set of vSphere clusters that use a single set of VXLAN tunnels. In our setup, we're using a single transport zone that includes both clusters, cluster 1 and cluster 2. This value is obtained from the NSX Manager API. Finally, the distributed virtual switch more FID is the vSwitch that will be used for port group provisioning. Now we're ready to deploy. Let's skip ahead. Let's create a simple network topology from the OpenStack side. We use the Neutron command line client to do this since Horizon's implementation presumes the need for an external network which we can't create in the context of this integration. For each network, NSX creates VXLAN tunnel and provisions an NSX edge node which works as a DHCP server. For each network, NSX creates a VXLAN tunnel and provisions an NSX edge node that works as a DHCP server. With the external network created, we can go back to Horizon. We can create a router. Set a gateway. create a subnet and perform other operations.
Once NSX has finished provisioning our subnet, we can add an interface to connect it to our external network. We can create additional networks in the same way. The NSXV plugin installs a new test image into Glance called TestVM-TCL. This image has pre-installed VMware tools required to work with NSX. It requires at least 512 megabytes of RAM to unpack all files into memory. We'll start two of them. We'll assign a floating IP to one of the instances in the regular OpenStack way. Using the OpenStack VLC console, we can access one of our VMs and ping the other on its internal IP. In the usual way, we can use OpenStax Horizon to add a security group rule admitting pings. And then from the controller, we can ping our instance on its floating IP.
Looking through both clients side by side, we can see that OpenStax and vSphere's picture of the implementation is essentially the same. All the networks are represented. Create a new network and it appears in both places. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, John, for that demo. Um, and that kind of brings us to the end of the presentation itself, which uh, which brings us to the Q&A portion. So we are now uh, open for questions. So if you have uh, anything that you saw in there that made you think, oh, what is going on there? Um, please go ahead and uh, please go ahead and put your question into the questions pane, and we will try and get to all of them. We do have a bunch of questions that came in, so uh, we will. Uh, try and get to as many of them as we can and the ones that we don't get to we will put into a blog post uh, to be published in the next you know couple of uh, next you know week or so at any rate so I'm going to go ahead and start uh, start looking at these questions so uh, Eric let's uh, let's start with you on this um, what we have someone who's asked what are the uh, uh, does Neutron support IPv6 assignments? Uh, so the answer is yes. I think there's a support IPv6 support on general release. Yeah. Okay. So that and and that should work for this integrated solution as well. Not uh, for this. So I need to follow up on that for this solution. Okay, so we'll, okay, so we'll follow up. So we know that Neutron yeah. does support IPv6. In fact, uh, yeah. you know, our, our own Sean Collins, I know, has worked very hard on that. So, uh, along with the whole IPv6 team, I don't want to say it's just Sean. Um, uh, what are the specific hardware and software requirements for NSXV and VDS deployment? For example, is there a specific doc that we can point people to on this? Uh, so for the uh, software side, uh, we have the uh, run book, so we can it is specify the specific uh, software requirements. Okay. Uh, for the hardware side, uh, I mean the the networking hardware side, right? It's physical networking. Right. Okay. Uh, so NSX um, is pretty much independent on the underlying uh, networking infrastructure, uh, as long as the IP connectivity is provided. Okay. The typical, typical deployment would be a uh, uh, leaf spine cloth fabric, IP fabric. Yeah. All right, excellent. John, um, I know you've been very involved in the runbook process. Can you talk a little bit about what that is and, and uh, what it covers and where to get it? Uh, well, it's uh, the, uh, we're talking about the, uh, the runbook for, for NSXV uh, here. Presumably. Um, I, it uh, will be available shortly, um, and uh, is uh, uh, basically our own books attempt to provide a combination of a um, uh, combination of a complete technology um, um, a backgrounder, a uh, a, uh, um, uh, a list of of, uh, of appropriate resources, uh, required software. Uh, links and uh, and uh, information necessary to acquire bits, uh, as well as uh, an equipment list, and then uh, a complete recipe for implementation uh, in a uh, in a fashion that uh, you know that has been validated and approved by Mirantis engineers as uh, as being production ready, presuming that the that the runbook itself has that intent. So, so a step by step installation on what to buy, how to hook it up. What to do with it to make it do what you want to do? That sounds wonderful. <laughs> it's not something that we think of when we think of OpenStack as a general rule. Well, you know, I think that I think that the runbooks are. I mean, obviously, this is an evolving um, product of engineering uh, first, and uh, 
and various communications facilitators, including marketing, but functioning in its editorial capacity. Second, um, and I think that um, that what is driving it is uh, <clears throat> well, partly the organic need to get information out across uh, an increasingly broad and diverse and geographically distributed organization, i.e., us, uh, right. to share information internally so that we can serve uh, customers and the community better, um, and also to stop tearing our own hair out. Um, we perform these these integrations. Um, uh, I uh, I was spared uh, the job of performing these direct integrations by uh, two of our colleagues in partner engineering uh, who uh, were finishing up, you know, in the in the wee wee hours of last <laughs> night in um, in Russia and bless them. Uh, but uh, but yes, we do this stuff all the time and we constantly constantly eat our own dog food. Um, so. Of course, we want to make things as easy, uh, you know, as possible for anyone who uses our product. Absolutely, and and we'll get a link to the runbook, uh, to any available runbooks on the thank you page, which you'll get uh, probably let's say it's Thursday, so probably on either tomorrow or next Tuesday. Um, I think we have time for one more question. Um, Eric, what is the difference between NSXV and NSXMH? Um, so the, in our show, uh, so there are two uh, uh, NSX uh, versions from provided by both by uh, VMware, right? So okay. the uh, a very high level. Um, so MH version is the most flexible um, uh, multi hypervisor uh, SDN solution. Um, and a V version is the uh, the most feature rich version, um, only for V center environments. So it provides, as I mentioned, it provides whole set of uh, layer two to seven uh, networking and the security uh, services. Right. Um, right. So both okay. both versions are uh, based on uh, Nasarius MVP technologies. So very similar uh, functional components, but the uh, there are uh, some uh, many many uh, architectural difference um, uh, in terms of control plane, data plane, uh, the feature sets. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So um, that kind of brings us to the end of our time. We do have a bunch more questions, and we will get them into a blog post. So if you didn't get your question answered, don't worry. Uh, so uh, I just want to go ahead and take uh, take a few minutes to not a few minutes, a few seconds to thank Eric G and John Janeshik. Uh, and also our wonderful engineering team and partner integration team who helped us get this all together. Um, please go ahead and join us for the rest of our webinars, and uh, thank you all for spending your time with us on this fine Thursday morning, and uh, we hope that you have a wonderful time. Thank you so much.